I think it's a lovely choice if a woman wants to simply be a wife and a mother. We have oh. one life. Why would you spend I, it with someone again, who doesn't marriage, make you happy? Marriage was about duty. And th this is the problem we have with women. Like, women, men tend to be better people than us. Yeah, they really do. They I tend couldn't, to... I couldn't no, agree. no, no. They... Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to watch a recent debate between Pearl from Just Pearly Things YouTube channel. Grace Blakely, a socialist author, and also Esther Williams, a trad wife. Now, none of these women really jump off the page to me as models for emulation in terms of the kind of woman that I'm looking for. And we'll get into that more, but it's an entertaining debate nevertheless. So let's get into it. Uh, Esther Williams, who's a 25-year-old trad wife, has amassed hundreds of thousands of followers by showing off her trad wife life online. She even gave up a job to be the perfect wife. So is she and others like her saving society? Or are they selling out the sisterhood? Well, joining me now is traditional wife and influencer Esther Williams. Sell it to me. Why do you think we should all go back to having trad wives in marriages? Um, well, I believe that... Well, I actually don't believe that everyone should be a traditional wife. I think that it is a choice. And I think it's a lovely choice if a woman wants to simply be a wife and a mother and that's enough for her and it's it's a simple way of living with traditional gender roles um it's balanced and we don't have to do it all as women i think we've proven that um it's possible but at what cost right right and and in terms of what being a trad wife involves what do you think it means to be a trad wife well, to adhere to traditional gender roles. So what I mean by that is the husband, he is the provider of the home. He goes out, he works, and he, he, he knows how to protect his family if need be. And the wife, she's the homemaker. She does the cooking, she does the cleaning, and she takes care of the home and children if there are any, and um, herself, of course. <laughs> so that's, it's adhering to traditional gender roles. Okay. Grace, I'm sure you thoroughly agree with this, don't you? <laughs> Look, I mean, what, um, what Esther's just said about the fact that women should be able to choose, obviously yeah. I completely agree. And, you know, men should be able to choose as well. I think the feminist critique of traditional gender roles and gender ideology isn't that some people like to stay at home and others don't. It's that you shouldn't be bound to pursue a certain life based on mm. the sex that you were born into at birth. The one issue I do have is I know actually um, someone, a friend of mine whose sister got involved in the trad wife movement in the US, basically. And she was quite young. She got married to someone who was like, this is what we're doing. You're going to be a trad wife. And basically came to regret it. Um, she felt like she'd been controlled, like her life became very small. And she couldn't get out. She couldn't escape because, you know, she'd lost all her friends. And, and this has become basically her entire life. And it concerns me uh, that sometimes we see this narrative on social media that women have to be a certain way mm. in order to get a husband. Um, so you have to be this like particular model of femininity for people to love you. And I think that's really sad because I don't think anyone should have to shave off any parts of themselves to be loved or to, to you know, find a husband or, you know, anything like that. All right. Now, obviously, in principle here, I agree with Esther. However, I must say, if I was lucky enough to find myself a truly trad wife one day, somebody that loved making a home for her husband and her family and got true joy and purpose and meaning out of being a mother and had the fear of God, then I can't imagine I would be too impressed by her big, beautiful, supple breasts, gently dancing to the rhythm of her cutting my lunch in a low-cut dress for millions of horny men to oogle at on TikTok. I can't imagine I'd be thrilled about that, and I would probably begin to question where this need for validation comes from. But if they're happy, and if they're populating the earth with much-needed little babies, then go for it. Better than what most people are doing in the West these days. Oh, <laughs> shit, that makes, shit, that make you f***ing throb right I, there. <laughs> I was, I swear I to God, went, oh, I Lord, was just I about was... to say my f***ing throbbing. <laughs> and now on to Grace, 
I mean, I just love it when these sorts of people call themselves socialists. It's the best. And to be fair, I mean, I think she would have held up just fine in the socialist revolutions of the past. I think she would have slotted in like the missing piece of the puzzle, actually, to Lenin's Bolshevik Red Army, or maybe Castro's Cuban Revolutionary Armed Forces. She would have been fine. Honestly, I can see her hiding in the Cuban jungle, engaging in various different guerrilla warfare battles, and then eventually marching on Havana. But no, in all seriousness, it's probably democratic socialism that she's after because, you know, free stuff. And now let's listen to Grace and Pearl have a bit of a back and forth. All right, Pearl, what do you think? Um, I think it's... I, I think it's a good that we're seeing a return to traditionalism. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. How... <laughs> I don't know. How has the feminist movement of the last few decades... How has it gone for you? I and mean, when you look at it and see how women have progressed, do you think it's been largely a force for good or do you think as the tradwives do, that perhaps we've lost that sense of gender rules, for want of a better phrase, which actually worked very well, well for I mean, people. I mean, we've seen families disappear. Guys, if you're getting value from this video, please don't forget to take a second to chuck a quick thumbs up on it. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, which 70% of you guys who watch the channel have not yet done, which makes me feel like an oppressed victim, then please don't forget to hit that big juicy red button. Back to the clips. You know, um, I saw a study the other day that said only 25% of, I mean, this is an American stat, and American households have families. So um, I guess there's positives and there's negatives, but it's like at what cost, you know? What to uh, you? 80, like 85, um, 150 years ago, the average woman had seven kids, 85% of people were married. I mean, you know, you know there was and, also and now, much now, higher infant mortality well, yeah, but, but and women is, died very young and, yeah, you know. I mean, women were more depressed than ever before. We're on antidepressants. Um, I mean, women there are a lot age, of... Women over the age of 45 are the least happy demographic. There are so, a lot of um, very the issue, the issue complex that, reasons for that. Well, I think and, it's and the issue for... you have is women like Emily Ratajkowski, you know, mm. marriage... Again, I've said this before, marriage isn't marriage anymore. The average marriage is seven years. We have things like no-fault divorce, leave if you're unhappy. So but what if... What does that mean, marriage isn't marriage? anymore because well, there have marriage, been so marriage, many marriage marriages over be, the course of history where people have been very unhappy either the man or the woman has been very unhappy and they've been forced basically to stay in a marriage it could have been an abusive well, marriage you, it could have been you, an emotionally I mean, abusive well, marriage marriage was and that about, would it was know, about, we have one life why would you spend it with again, someone who doesn't marriage, make you happy marriage was about duty and that this is the problem we have with women like women men tend to be better people than us yeah they really do they I tend to no, 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 no. They, they tend to do the right oh thing they are much maligned species i agree there's a reason we have phrases like a man of his word, right? Yeah. Not a woman of her word. I because just... men, men will actually stick things out. Women, when she gets hard, we just leave. And you're proving, Look, you're proving think, my point. What was, your, a... what, was your, what was your first answer? My happiness, right? Of course. But, like, Everyone deserves thing is, to be happy. Family, Everyone deserves family, to be loved. A family doesn't work when it's about you. It's supposed to be about your kids. Well, and that's the, pro that's the problem in modern... It's supposed to be about everyone. No, no, no. There's no, a balance no. and, and a compromise and, okay, in do, relationships. Do you think Am I allowed to talk now? Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Look, I think relationships are about balance. They're about compromise. They're about knowing, understanding yourself, learning to, you know, know and understand another person. Eventually, potentially, if you want to, bringing children into the world and teaching them how to do that as well. Teaching them to balance a sense of their own identity with the love that they have for, for another person. And, you know, for example, I know um, a, an older woman, actually, who's a friend of our family, who um, got divorced at about 60. She had, you know, this lovely family. They were together yeah. since they were 18. And she said, I got to a point after I'd stopped being a mother and, you know, I was just Kind of getting on, I realized I'd lost my sense of who I was. And I didn't really feel like I knew who I was anymore because I'd always just been a wife and a mother. And I wanted to go out and explore that. Is, and I think that's what fantastic. Is, what, is Good for her. what is traditionalism? Um, I don't know it's, what you think traditionalism I, I would say, is. I would say a modern mentality is me before the family. I would say traditional traditionalism is the family before me, especially in women. You're and so, and so, and so what I actually, it's interesting you said 60 year olds, cause you know, I've interviewed 600, 700 people roughly in the past year and a half. I've done hundreds of shows interviewing people about relationships. And what I find is the 60 year olds tend to, a lot of those women led their daughters astray. 
You know, there, there's a reason we're in this mess, right? A lot of those women had the wrong mentality when it came to marriage and had exactly the mentality that you're talking about. Which where, is the one which to prioritize is, balancing one's own sense of identity with no, compromise no, in a relationship my, with someone else. myself before the marriage. But that's, again... You and, know, and it's really unfortunate because here, I would say actually. the women of our generation really are, are suffering because of the advice of the women of the past. There's an interesting point here, right, which is that we do live in a very individualistic society and we're all told... Actually, I think a lot of the time in our relationships as well, you have to be a certain way if you want to receive love. You have to abide by these uh, these well, norms. Yeah. You have to be a certain level of attractiveness. Men, you have to men, earn a certain amount men. of money. It's all about you. And that's not what love is. But right. That's actually a really good point, at least in the modern sense anyway. Women shouldn't have to do anything at all like self-improve, change bad behaviours, become less self-obsessed or focus on greater purposes when they get married. They should just be able to have it all. All the career, all the family, all the Prince Charming, all the holidays, all the romance and all the love and all the spontaneity without sacrificing any of these things. And men, we should just accept them exactly how they are. We should have absolutely no question marks. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll call that balance. Sure, Grace. Just imagine for a second, if men were out here giving each other this sort of advice. Imagine if I were out here saying, guys, you shouldn't have to shave off any parts of yourself. You shouldn't have to self-improve. Don't go to the gym. You shouldn't have to conform to societal norms and get a job. You don't have to take any personal responsibility. You don't even have to shower if you don't want to. And women should just love you the way that you are. It's about balance. And I mean, I don't mind Pearl. I think she's done exceptionally well with her show. She certainly knows how to garner attention, even though we have pretty different styles in that regard. Her style is more to say things like men are better people than women, which personally, I wouldn't say something like that. It's a flabby, low resolution way to articulate yourself. And it's meant to get clipped and put on Twitter and cause controversy. But for me, I so much prefer and I so much more respect somebody that can build out an argument with concise and genuine rhetoric. But in today's attention economy, that is much harder to come by. I will say though, she did do very well at times here and she made some great points, especially about marriage and it being about the children that the 60 year old women are giving all of the bad advice. I actually happen to completely agree with that because the sexual revolution happened in the 60s and things have been going drastically downhill ever since then. I mean, take 100 women from the 1950s and put them up against 100 women from the modern and you will see Let's just say quite the contrast. And now let's round this one off with some thoughts from Esther. It's actually been very interesting listening to this. Let me bring it back in Esther. So, so Esther, in terms of trad values, like my wife puts the bins out, for example, right? I don't, I've never asked her to. She's just adopted that role in our house. So I never put the bins out. I don't know if I should feel ashamed of myself. I do other stuff, but I don't put the bins out. As a trad wife, do you put your bins out? Is that part of the gender rule? of the 50s? Is that what used to happen? Or is the man supposed to do that? I mean, um, how do these rules work in reality? To be honest, it, it has nothing. It, I don't want to say nothing. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the 50s and the 60s, um, especially in our ho household. I, I enjoy the aesthetic. Um, and I think that's where people get a little mixed up with my channel. But um, I, well, to answer your question, actually, I, I don't put the trash bins out. My husband does that, mm. but I think we, we have this, um, this thing in our household where he does most of the outdoor work. I do all the indoor work. Of course, he works and provides, and I'm the homemaker. That's what works for us. But in relation to what, right, in relation to what Pearl said, it's, it's part of uh, a sense of being dutiful and having no problem actually with being dutiful in a marriage uh yes i believe that traditionalism can it, it is putting um your family before yourself and i think it it is um it is having those traditional values that were once definitely more in place in um god family and love and we live in a very selfish society now, you know, you see self-love printed everywhere, right? And um, women, I'm speaking of divorce and marriage, m women are leaving marriage far more easy, easier mm -hmm. than uh, men, and they are um, doing it because they think there's something better out there for them, that the grass is greener on the other side, and they're finding out that is wrong, and they're going through divorce after divorce, and um, 
you know, marriage is a bond and it's a sacred bond where two become one under God. And that's beautiful. And you have to protect that at all costs. And and I think part of that is putting your partner's needs before your own every single day. And I try and do my best. And I think of my husband as much as I can and what will please him and make him happy. I love the sound of this. Sorry, I mean, uh, I mean, obviously I don't. I, I wouldn't dare to express my opinion. I think that's, you know, a lovely way to think about relationships if it's reciprocal. Um, you yes. know, you're talking about you know, about God and, no, and family I mean, and tradition. I, I, this is the Paul, can I women, please women finish keep my score. sentence? Life isn't about I thought score. women were supposed to, you know, recognize their place and learn not to speak over other people. Um, no, so <laughs> look, I think it's reciprocated. You talked there about about religion, about Christianity, and uh, about self-love. You know, uh, the the my kind of most important commandment. There's two most important commandments: love your neighbor as yourself. So that requires a foundation of self-love and respect for oneself and knowledge of one's own identity and what one wants to be able to receive and give the love that you're going to have in a solid and healthy relationship. I think it has to be mutual. So some lovely points by Esther there. And then the self-love comes in. You must love yourself before you can love someone else. You must love yourself before you can have a family. You must be internally happy 100% of the time. And if at any point you feel like you are not totally happy and you need to do some more self loving than you just do you boo boo absolutely terrible messaging self love is narcissism you should respect yourself but not love yourself if you actually think about that it's just a weird thing to say and this is the sort of selfishness that's causing the familial recession that we can't seem to find a way out of so guys with that Hope you hit those links in the bio. Join my Telegram group. We are absolutely firing in there. Different articles, discussing events from around the world every single day. That's going to be at the top of the bio. Pinned at the top of the comments will be my locals. You can come check it out. It's a place where you can chuck a few bucks my way a month. If you'd like to support the channel and create a bit of a cushion from the old demonetization that happens all the time. And also, guys, if you want to subscribe to the channel, boom, right here. And if you want to watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake. This is Jodosnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.